Hello. Oh, so what a mess, right? I um well what I really want to do is um help spread facts over fiction about um the coronavirus outbreak that we are dealing with. Um I feel like there's so much floating around um, that we're losing track of what really is important to know um, and what the facts are. I'm not a doctor. Um, I play one on TV. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I am a nutritionist though and that does not give me authority to um, tell you what is and what isn't right or anything different um, than what I know. But um, what I do want to do is almost um, repeat the things that the CDC has to say, the things that the government has to say. Um, I find it. I find a lot of it very interesting. If if I'm completely honest, like the um, conspiracy theories and um, you know where it originates and all of that, but so much of that is really unknown. So it doesn't matter in the you know in the grand scheme of things right now. Um, although I'd be happy to discuss that with you anytime you want. Um, I have my own opinions, but opinions are not what needs to be out there. What needs to be out there are facts that we can all um, grab a hold to so that we're educated and we know instead of just repeating what somebody posted on Facebook or um, Instagram or that we saw on Twitter or whatever, um, you know, like there's just crazy stuff out there. Like it all being started from bat soup. And I mean, you know, which has been proven untrue. That video was actually um, shot in 2016. So be aware of, you know, what's um, being put out there and check your facts before you um, repost. I saw some posts last night um, that really made me want to get on here and talk about it because I knew that they were reposting, like it was just a repost, and that's all good to do so long as you check those facts out. Um, you know, let's not be part of the problem, let's be part of the solution. Um, that's the way I feel about it, which is why my family and I are staying at home, not because we're afraid or not because we're living in fear, but because we want to be smart and we want to be educated and we don't want to contribute to the problem, okay? So, um, I have a bunch of notes that I really want to go over today, and the reason I'm using notes instead of just like going from memory is because again, like I just said, like facts are so important to me and getting it right. Like truth is truth and I really want to keep it there. Like I don't want to go into my opinions of things. I want to go into facts. Um, so all my facts have come like through the CDC that I'm going to share and, um, you know, through the white house and, um, through, um, you know, like CNN, Fox, like things that have been documented and proven and are factual, okay? So, I think that it's very important first and foremost to understand that coronavirus has been around forever. Um, it has been around primarily in animals. Um, what is changing is that for some reason, and we can all debate why, this virus jumped from animals to humans, okay? So, there are actually seven different strains of coronavirus that the government has known about for a long time, but because, you know, at, that can affect humans, okay? But because they have not been shown up, because they haven't shown up in humans, nobody really started digging into them, investigating them, um, you know, coming up with a, um, vaccine or um a cure so you know whatever because um you know they didn't really know it was needed well the thing is is that the coronavirus um that we're dealing with currently covid19 produces those flu-like symptoms um that are that are a lot like they overlap they look very similar and they look the same and 
you know, before this, honestly, people were not testing people's blood for coronavirus, okay? They were testing for the flu. So, um, and, and I don't know about you, but like when I had the flu recently, nobody took my blood, um, which is how you tell if it's coronavirus, okay? Um, they swapped my nose, they tested it, and they said you're positive for flu, okay? Well, the thing about it is, is the flu is something that has been um, studied a whole lot more than coronavirus. Um, when the flu originally became a huge pandemic, 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 whatever, um, you know, it caused a whole lot of the same things that we're dealing with right now. Um, I think it's being shut down and, and the research began, okay? So it's kind of like, I, I feel like if we think about it from that standpoint, like we're in at the beginning of something that's happening, um, you know, that we can see it through a different lens and know that this is, there's nothing new under the sun, um, that we are just learning to navigate new waters, okay? So the coronavirus has been around forever and ever. Somehow, no, well, I don't know about forever and ever, but it's been around for a really long time. It's been documented, you know, um, there was even a patent on it. There's been studies on um, this, even this particular strain, okay? But it had not shown up in humans until recently, okay? Um, this virus spreads through droplets of our bodily fluid, okay? A lot of this I know you already know. Um, through sneezing, through our saliva, um, any kind of bodily fluid that, you know, can be put out of our body um, is how this disease is being transmitted, as far as we know at this point. Um, so, some things that I found very interesting are that, um, let me see where I wrote that. Um, so, the coronavirus can actually hang out in the air for up to three hours. So, if somebody sneezes and it goes up into the air and they've had coronavirus, that disease can linger in the air around you, okay? After they're long gone, um, three hours. Like, does anybody else think that's a little um, crazy? Like, I mean, I do, but... Um, so it can go for three hours in the air and it can go for two to three days, days on plastic and steel surfaces. So if somebody um, has sneezed that is a carrier of the coronavirus and it gets on their hand and they touch something plastic or steel, it can live on that for two to three days, okay? This is from the CDC, this is not from me. Um, so this is what is going on. This is why this is such a huge problem, okay? So one of the things that differentiates coronavirus from the flu is the rate at which it is being spread. Um, a lot of that is due to the fact that, um, you know, we don't know as much about it and people are obviously getting vaccinated for flu um, at this point. But, um, you know, the rate at which the coronavirus is spreading is much, much higher than what it is for the flu. So with the flu, the incubation period is two to five days. So if you've been exposed to the flu, you may be um, symptom free for two to five days, but you're still carrying that virus in your body or on your body and you can give it to other people without even knowing you have it. The difference with coronavirus is, um, and I want to get this right. So it can go for up to from two to 14 days without showing any symptoms, okay? So you can have a two to four, 14 day incubation period with the coronavirus. Whereas with the flu, you're talking two to five days. So people are not knowing that they're carrying this, okay? And they're sharing it to other people where, Okay, so it may show up in you as a cold. You may not even go to the doctor about it because you're, you're you know, young or because you're healthy or whatever. So you get a cold, you show a lot of the symptoms, you don't even know you had coronavirus, okay? But what happens is you're around other people, you're transmitting that onto a surface, you're breathing it into the air, and it's being carried to a lot of people who have compromised immune systems, okay? So, your elderly, 
family, your um, our cancer friends, our um, autoimmune friends, you know, this is what's happening. It's being spread, and because we don't know enough about it, there's no way to shut it down. Um, the treatments that are used for the flu are not effective on coronavirus. Um, there is some studies starting to come out of Japan about um, them having something that's effective, but even if it is, it's not gonna be available enough to shut down this pandemic. So this is why I feel like it's really a great thing that everybody's gone into quarantine. Um, I mean, we're looking at a two to 14 day incubation period. That's nuts to me. Like it just, I mean, at that speed, like what are we looking at here if we don't shut it down, if we don't stop it, if we don't like cut off the head of the monster? Um, so let's see, what else? Um, okay, so here are some facts about it. So it appears to be transmitted within six feet of each other, which is why they're telling everybody to not get within six feet of another person. Um, through person-to-person -person contract. Um, and as of yesterday, in the United States, there have been 7,038 cases of coronavirus that have been um, identified and diagnosed. Um, we have ended up with 97 deaths so far here, okay? And I'm gonna give you the timeline of things in a minute because I think that looking at the timeline really shows like how rapidly things are changing and things are happening. Um, so out of the 7,038 cases of confirmed corona in the United States, um, they have been able to narrow some of that down to how it's being spread or like um, being brought in, okay? So, um, 269 of those cases, they know have, those people have been exposed by traveling, okay? They know that 276 of those cases have been um, contracted by person-to-person -person contact, okay? Now, there's another that leaves 6,493 cases that they can't nail down to how it's being spread, okay? Um, there's actually a case that, um, there, so one of the very beginning cases in the United States, I think it was the second case, and I need to find where I have that written down because I haven't even gone there yet, but, um, the second case in the U.S., they have no idea how it showed up in, in the sky, okay? So the first case, we know that he had been traveling abroad and he came back, he had coronavirus, which he eventually ended up, you know, not making it. Um, he was 61 years old, I think. Um, but the second case that had been documented um, or caught, they don't know. They don't know. He had not traveled anywhere. He had not come in contact with anybody that they are aware, um, you know, had the coronavirus. So they're not able to nail it down, which leaves all this other stuff up in the air, in my opinion, okay? This is where, how long is it surviving in the air? How long is it um, surviving on contact surfaces? How near do you need to be to people to contract this. And remember, contracting it doesn't mean you're even gonna have symptoms. You may just carry the virus with you. You might transmit it to somebody else, you may not, which is why this quarantine is the best thing to stop um, the spread of this thing in our area, okay? Or in our, in our United States. I mean, who wants complete global pandemic shutdown, right? Okay, so, Here's what we're looking at. Let me see, where did I go? I went back too far. All right, so everybody is susceptible. Everybody is susceptible to catching the virus, just like you are the flu. Um, a lot of the same preventative measures, you know, um, apply. And this is why you're hearing wash your hands, take your vitamins, you know, practice good oral, or not oral, but, you know, good physical hygiene. This is why all that same stuff is applying, okay? So, here's, here's where our timeline starts, okay? December 31st in China, okay? So, guy has pneumonia, goes in to the hospital, is having all these issues, okay? Well, they're able to trace this 
pneumonia back to the coronavirus because we know that you know pneumonia just doesn't typically come on by itself like it you get it like as in um connection to a respiratory infection of some sort right so he had pneumonia well then all of a sudden all these other cases start rolling in of um, pneumonia and they are able to identify this particular strain of coronavirus as being the culprit for all of this okay so that's december 31st pneumonia is detected in china and is tied back to um the coronavirus january um Ninth, the same guy is the first death um, from respiratory failure due to the pneumonia. He was 61 years old, okay? And this is via CNN, like, as it was happening. Um, so, that's January 9th. 9th. January 20, there are 139 new cases of coronavirus. Hey, girl. Um, and... The same day, January 20th, a third death, okay? So, we're looking at from December 31st to January 20th, we go from one known case of corona to 139 diagnosed known cases of corona. Um, that's like a really small window, but all this is still in China at this point, okay? So, January 21st, remember the guy I was just telling you about? Officials in Washington state announced their first case. Now they are able to tie his um, contraction of the virus back to travel, okay? So they know that he has come in contact with somebody else, that this is how he got corona. Um, and so they quarantine him, try to shut that down, okay? January 30th, US reports the first person-to-person -person transmission of the virus. Okay, so it's starting to spread. They're not really sure, like, at this point, what's going on. January 31st, um, the president announced no entry to foreign nationals who traveled to China in the past 14 days, okay? Um, February 7th, 2nd, a Filipino man dies from coronavirus, and this is the first death outside of China at this point, February 2nd, okay? February 4th is our cruise ship issue that goes down, okay? So, like, we're talking, like, this very, very small window here, okay? So, February 4th confirmed 10 people on the Diamond Princess cruise ship carrying 3,700 people, and they quarantined them, okay? Well, remember all the ways that this is being spread. Remember that you may not test positive for a while during this incubation period okay so they quarantine the ship they think they're you know at this point nobody's like really um freaking out that bad okay they're just like okay we're gonna get it under control this is not a problem we've got it well um february 14th a chinese tourist dies in france and egypt announces their first confirmed case okay so, February 19th, okay, February 4th was when we found out about the people on the ship. February 19th, the Diamond Princess people who are not showing symptoms, who aren't known to be positive, are let off the ship, okay, despite the advice from the infectious disease experts. Okay, so that was that's pretty quick in my opinion, because if people are if you're in an incubation period and everybody's trapped like in their little petri dish, this is I mean, what in the, like what are you thinking? I mean, anyway, but that's not fact. That's my opinion, right? Okay, so February 25th, Italy released a list of villages that they put in complete lockdown that affected over 100,000 people because this is beginning to spread so fast, okay? Uh, February 26th, Trump puts Pence in charge of the US government's response to how we're gonna deal with this. Um, in the same, on the same day, February 26th, um, the, this is when the California case was confirmed, but no 
exposure can be linked, okay? So he had not traveled, he had not been around anybody that had been known to have coronavirus at this point, but he had it and nobody knows like how he got it. Is that like flagging anybody? <sighs> so February 29th is when our Washington State man died, okay? So what day did we, okay, January 21st is when we found out that it was in the U.S. in, the, in Washington State and then um, the 29th, he passed due to respiratory failure, okay? Um, March 1st, the health emergency declared in, Flo they declared a health emergency in Florida. Kentucky followed, New York, Maryland, Utah, and Oregon, okay? So these these are the, the states that are saying, okay, we got a problem, like something's crazy is going on, we need to be real careful. Um, but a lot of the rest of us, me included, are like, man, that's crazy. And we're just going on about our daily lives. Like, we're not seriously concerned. I wasn't seriously concerned. I, and concerned being a broad word, like, I wasn't locking myself in my house, okay? Um, March 3rd, officials in Iran temporarily released 54,000 people from their prisons and deploy health workers out to help. Now, I found this really interesting that they're releasing um, their inmates. Um, and I looked into it and really the basis of what it looks like is there was a politician who apparently contracted um, coronavirus from being in the Iranian prison. So these people are kept in really bad um, environments. And so it was not a slow trickle effect. Like they were concerned it was going to just absolutely run rampant so much that they released all these people from their prison. That's kind of terrifying in my opinion, but we don't live in Iran, okay? Um, March 4th. Now, up until now, they're not testing anybody for coronavirus unless they have they know that they have been exposed or have traveled into an area where it was highly exposed okay well march 4th they realize oh hey we got a major problem on our hands we're gonna let the general public be tested okay so that's when they allowed that to start happening march 9th is when all of italy closed down um, due to this huge pandemic, okay? Um, March 11th, they um, declared a pandemic and travel is restricted from Europe to the United States. So we're not letting anybody in. We're going, okay, we got a serious issue. Um, March 13th is when the president declared the national emergency um, and he frees up to $50 million to be able to aid in the support of um, health care and um, ending this crisis, okay? Because we've got to get tests out there. We've got to get, you know, workers on the ground. We've got to put a stop to every bit of this. Um, so, March 18th, which was yesterday, um, you know, we're looking at all 50 states are covered in confirmed cases of this coronavirus, okay? So, we get 45 million cases of the flu every single year in America, okay? Um, only about 1% of those end up in the hospital. With the coronavirus, in two months, we've had 80,000 cases. That's a lot. This thing is spreading like wildfire because, in my opinion, it is spreading like wildfire because the incubation period is so long. This is why it is so important for people to not touch each other, to not breathe on each other, to maintain your bubble around you, right? Like, I'm all for a personal space, but this is like serious. This is not like, don't breathe on me. This is like, keep your distance. Not only because you could be carrying a virus that you don't even know about, but because other people around you can catch it. Stay at home. Because if you're carrying something and you go and you leave it somewhere, somebody else can pick that up. This is crazy. Like, wash your hands, 
take care of yourself and stay home until all of this starts to get under control. You know, if we don't stay put, those of us who are perfectly healthy, who could be carriers or could have it and not even know it because we're healthy and it will pass quickly, are releasing this out to people who are not, um, who don't have the immune system to be able to handle it the way that we can, okay? Um, we just want to stop it. We want to give the government time to figure out a way um, to find a solution, to be prepared for our family members who um, may get this and, you know, may get pneumonia and um, not be able to get rid of it, okay? If we can't think of others in this time, then everything's gonna fall apart. It's not just about you, it's not just about me. I'm not sitting here in my house scared, but what I am doing is staying in my house to stop the spread of something because other people matter too. Um, so that's my two cents on this situation. I hope that now you know um, a little bit more about why we're doing what we're doing, why the sh schools are sh shutting down, you know, why everybody is freaking out. If I have to hear it's just like the flu one more time, I may scream. Um, the flu is a very, you know, even though they look the same, they're not the same. Um, the flu doesn't spread like this. It doesn't spread this fast. The symptoms are the same and it may pass in you like the flu and you may have never known. But for other people, it's life and death. So, you know, until there's a way to help people who contract this virus, we all need to be vigilant and give the government time to, or give the CDC or, you know, give whoever needs the time to bring, to bring in a solution to this problem time. They need the time. So that's what we're doing. That's why we're staying put. Order, pick up. Enjoy the time with your family. Um, you know, when else, like, when else in our lifetime are we going to get the world shut down where we can just spend time with our family? Um, the people that live in our house, stay away from your grandparents. Um, I know it's hard to not let your kids play with the neighbors, but again, it's not about you and it's not about, you know, the moment. Like, people know better than we do. People are more educated, all the people more educated than we are, are making these calls for our best interests. Now, can there be a conspiracy behind every bit of it? Absolutely. Um, do I believe everybody has their own agenda? Yep, I sure do. Um, but I also believe that God is in control, but we have to be smart and we need to be safe and we need to stay put. And you know, listen, do do what we're told for once, okay? Like, I'm all for being, going against the grain. I mean, everybody knows I got all my own opinions, and I'm not afraid to share them, but um, this is one of those times where you need to know the facts. Like, stop feeding into all this, like, junk that's out there, because half of it is absolutely ridiculous. Like, do your research, Go to, get off the conspiracy theories and, you know, all this mess, okay? Just stick to the facts. Do your best. Whether it's real, whether it's not real, you need to know that you've put 100% into protecting our country and to protecting our family, okay? All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll chat with you later.